Okay. Well, I bring you greetings from the Diocese of Texas, from the city of Taylor, Texas, which is a town of about 15,000 people northeast of Austin. And um, also greetings from our online community, which covers the state of Texas and also has membership in other states in the United States. I'm so grateful for this online community and for the chance to bring a word to you today. So the first parable in today's gospel is often quoted for Jesus's response to the Pharisees, give to the emperor what is the emperor's and give to God what is God's. But I want to draw attention to the preceding question. Ask if it was lawful to pay taxes to the emperor. Jesus asked to see a coin. And then he asked of the coin, whose head is this and whose title? In some Greek translations, the question asked uses the words icon or likeness. Whose likeness is this and whose title? The likeness on the denarius, of course, was Caesar's. And additionally, there was an, an engraving on the coin declaring Caesar's divinity. The very holding of the coin was a way of breaking the second commandment for one who was serious about following Torah. And so the Pharisees, sort of combining today with the Sadducees, perhaps to trap Jesus, but Jesus's language and choice of words reminds his listeners of the same language used in the Greek translation of Genesis 1, verse 26. And then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. Whose likeness is this? We are called to remember who we are made in the likeness of God. Rather than calling out the Pharisees for breaking God's law, he calls them out for hypocrites, for wearing a false self, literally for speaking from behind a mask. Jesus calls us out for forgetting who we are or perhaps speaking behind a mask. Borrowing Pastor David Luce's words, we were made in the image and likeness of God. And because we bear God's likeness, we are to act like God, not mind you, like gods, those who lord their authority over others for gain, but rather like God, the one who creates and sustains and nurtures and redeems and saves, no matter what the cost. We are called, that is, to serve as God's agents, God's partners, and God's co-workers, exercising dominion over creation, not as an act of power, but rather as an act of stewardship and extending to all the abundant love of God. So we might consider this parable as a reminder of who we are made in the, that we are made in the likeness of God and that we are called to create, to sustain, to nurture. And that takes me in its own peculiar way to the story of St. Gall and our teddy bears today. So I didn't know much about St. Gall and, until I heard from the Holy Hermits, but a story that I read talked about Gaul traveling in the woods in what is now Switzerland and warming his hands at the fire. And a bear charged him from the woods, 
the holy man, it is said, rebuked the bear, and the bear, so awed by his presence, stopped its attack and slunk off to the trees. There it gathered firewood before returning to share the heat of the fire with Gaul. The legend says that for the rest of his days, Gaul was followed around by his companion, the bear. And our teddy bears represent that comforting, companionable presence. And at the same time, our teddy bears have the likeness of great hulking beasts. Black bears are grizzlies. That's what I'm familiar with. But even polar bears, huge beasts who overpower whatever is in their path. One must, must be cautious of them when encountering the real thing. Like Aslan the lion in the Narnia tale, they are not safe, but they are good. Like the Pharisees, when I forget or lose sight of the fact that I am made in the image of God and belong to God, I am pulled towards power and wealth, towards all of those things that are represented by the coin of the realm. I am pulled to put on a false self, to speak behind the mask of power or popularity or wealth or whatever mask keeps you away and hides me, not only from you, but from God. So one of the ways the story of St. Gaul has been interpreted is with a Jungian flavor. Perhaps what we learn from St. Gaul is to face our shadow side those parts of ourself that we are not companions with, those parts of ourselves that we have forgotten, that we have not cared for. And so St. Gall reminds us to remember in whose likeness we are made and to remember with all parts of ourselves that we are holy and we are a creation of God and we are made in the likeness of God. Amen.